Welcome to another Falcon 4 BMS tutorial. In this video we're going to be going over how to use the targeting pod, also known as the TGP sniper pod or Pantera pod, and the laser guided bombs which are also known as GBUs. So what is the targeting pod? The targeting pod is basically a fancy camera that can view things at very long distances in thermal imaging, also known as FLIR, and it also has the ability to emit a laser that can actively ping and laze targets of opportunity. And um, what that laser guidance allows is for you to accurately deliver bombs that uh, have a laser guidance suite, such as a GBU. Okay. Now, this is in contrast to dumb bombs like Mark 82s or Mark 84s that don't have any laser guidance and once you release them they're pretty much on their own. What differs about a GBU is that when you release it, it actually is dumb. It's just like a Mark 84 or Mark 82. But right before it hits, about 10 seconds before it hits, um, it can accept terminal guidance from your aircraft and what that implies is that you can laze the target and it will guide the bomb onto the target. So this sort of greatly expands what bombs can do. It allows you to hit moving targets, for instance. It also allows you to deliver precision ordnance into windows and things like that. So how do you get the targeting pod? Um, oh, I should also add that the targeting pod can also be used to look at other aircraft. It has an air-to-air -air mode. I'm going to only go over that very briefly in this video because it's very uh, useless and you'll, you'll never really use it in combat. But it can also look at air-to-air -air contacts. I should state that for the record. Okay, now moving on, how do you enable the targeting pod, okay? The targeting pod is a separate module that can be installed onto your aircraft in the loadout screen. You'll see a little checkbox right above the ordnance list. It'll say TGP, and there might also be a HTS there, depending on what version of the uh, Viper you're flying. All you need to do to install the module in your aircraft is just click that box, check that box, it'll turn green, and then you have a targeting pod on your aircraft. Now, the first thing we're going to do when we're using the targeting pod is we need to turn on laser arm, okay? And that's left of your left MFD, right above master arm. Okay, you can use the targeting pod without laser arm being on, but the laser will not be active, meaning you can't provide guidance for bombs. So we're going to put that into the up position. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to show you air to ground mode. So let's go ahead and switch into master air, master air to ground mode. And um, what we need to do is we need to provide a page on your MFD for the TGP. So by default, we have weapon. Let's go ahead and replace weapon with TGP by double clicking under weapon and then uh, clicking TGP. We now have the targeting pod display active. We can switch between the various pages and back to it if we want. Okay, now it's in standby mode by default, meaning it's pretty much off. To take it out of standby mode and put it into uh, air to ground or air to air mode, we need to click above where it says standby. We need to click above that. Then we'll see the available modes on the right and left. So you can you can uh, select air to ground mode if you're in master air to ground mode. You can select air to air mode, which would be right here if you're in master air to air mode. Which I'll just yep. and if you're in navigation mode, you can select either air-to-air -air mode or air-to-ground mode. So in order to select the mode, we're just going to click next to AG. We're now in air-to-ground mode. This is the default view that you'll see. We're just going to very quickly uh, run over everything. The first thing we're going to start with is uh, the center here, not SOI. Okay, it's gray. You can barely see it probably not SOI is telling you that this MFD is not the sensor of interest, okay? Now in order to manipulate the targeting pod, it has to be the sensor of interest. And how you change uh, your sensor of interest is DMS down. So by default, the sensor of interest is on the left MFD. And we can know that because there's a white um, outline surrounding the MFD, okay? 
So if we wanted to manipulate the targeting pod, we'd have to press DMS down to switch to the MFD, which I'm going to do right now. And you'll see that there is a now a white outline surrounding the MFD. So now that we've done that, the not SOI disappears, and we can just talk about the other features of the MFD now. So where it says AG, that's just telling you what master mode you're in for the targeting pod. Uh, PTR is not implemented. Okay. The center where it says wide and then it has 1.0x under it, that's the current magnification level of the targeting pod. So there's two modes there, is wide and narrow, and you can switch between them by clicking on the button above where it says wide. And within each greater magnification mode, wide or narrow, you can also zoom in and zoom out um, further. So we have wide and narrow. And keep in mind, in order to zoom in or zoom out any further than that, you have to have this selected as a sensor of interest. If we wanted to zoom in more, we would just press Control and then F3 and F4. F3 zooms out and F4 zooms in. And we can see that uh, if we switch to narrow, we can zoom in even further down to like a meter of detail. It's very, very amazing how far we can zoom in. So I'm just going to slew over here, try to find something to look at that actually exists. Whoa. Masking in my aircraft. Okay, here we go. So this is a, a distant airfield or a targeting range. I can now zoom in and zoom out. We can see things which we weren't able to see before. Okay, now the button, the option to the right of the zoom is override, and that will just basically turn your targeting pod on and off. To the right of that is control, which um, will you can customize the targeting pod, which we'll do in a moment. Below that, where it says 12380, that is the current altitude and barometric of the aircraft. And we can see on our HUD, the radar altimeter, 12380. Okay. Okay, below that, where it says WHOT, that is the current polarity of the targeting pod. So right now we're in white hot, which is WHOT. If we click that, we can switch it to black hot and to TV, okay? Now, white hot and black hot are flare modes. They are um, thermal imaging, okay? So anything that is that is emitting heat, anything that's emitting heat um, in this mode will appear as white. I'm just trying to find something. Let's see here. I'm trying to find some hot. Oh, here we go. There's a little town here. Now, these buildings are showing up as white because they are hot objects. They're hotter than the, the ambient terrain. And we can see here, um, zooming in, this is FLIR. This is the white hot mode. Now, if we click that again, we'll switch to black hot. And now anything that's hot is going to show up as black. Okay. Now, what are the downsides of FLIR? Okay. Number one is that it's fuzzier, the image is fuzzier, like we can see here it's a little, these are, they're like blocky, the outlines on the buildings are a little blockier, and it also doesn't zoom in as far as TV mode, but that's pretty much the only disadvantage that it has. The biggest advantage is very obvious, and that is anything that's hot will stick out like a sore thumb, you'll be able to easily see it and acquire it. So if we switch to um, TV, we can see that it's much more zoomed in, and we can really zoom in far now with TV. I can actually make out the billboards here on this building and um, this is basically just a closed circuit TV system when you're in TV mode. It's uh, you know there's nothing special about it. It's pretty simple. Um, yeah that's TV. So under that, all this stuff is pretty much unimplemented. Where it says SP, all I will say is do not press that. Okay, that's snowplow mode for the targeting pod. 
and it's not implemented right now, and it's actually buggy, so do not use snowplow mode with the targeting pod. Okay, now, the back to the center now. We have a crosshair, which is just basically telling you where your sensor is currently pointed, okay? We also have, um, and by the way, if you're, if you're in the narrow view mode, then you won't have these, you see these brackets around the crosshair? This only appears in wide mode, so if you're zoomed in, like let's say you want to know if you're zoomed in or not and you don't want to look up or whatever, for whatever reason, um, you can just, you can just, uh, go off the bracket surrounding the crosshair. So there's no brackets if it's on narrow mode. Okay, now, under that, under the crosshair, it will tell you what mode your laser is currently in. And we're going to go into that in a minute. Uh, we're not going into that yet, but that's just, just so you know where it is, that's where it is. To the right of that is telling you if the laser is armed, if it's L, solid L and the laser is armed, if it's flashing, then it's actually emitting. So right now we're not actually emitting, so we're not lasing what we're looking at. Um, there's two ways to laze something that you're looking at. There's the second trigger indent on the joystick, which you're never going to use. I mean, you could use, but you rarely would use. Uh, the other thing is that when you pickle, it will automatically laze when, it, when the bomb is about to go terminal and that will flash L right before it impacts. Okay, now, three, four, six, seven. This is the uh, uh, stations on your aircraft. Basically, it's telling you what weapon you have selected. So that's station three, station four, station six, station seven. Three and seven are on the outer pylon, or not on the outer pylon, but they're outer on the wing, and four and six are inner, uh, right next to the uh, cockpit. Um... Okay, under that, where it says T14.1, that is the range, or whatever you're looking at. Okay, and we can see how it changes when I slew around. Okay, to the right of that, where it says ready, that's just telling you your master arm mode. So if it says ready, then your master arm's on. I'm going to turn off master arm. You can see that it uh, goes away. And if we put it on the simulate, it'll say sim there instead. Okay, this bottom, the last thing that we're going to see here is the, at the bottom right, it has a time, okay? That's the time to weapon release, also time, also known as time to target, okay? Now, when you actually pickle and the bomb comes off the rail, that will switch to time to impact. So, let's say you engage something, uh, you know, we're a minute out, it goes down to zero, we release the bomb, then it will go up to like 20 or 30 or whatever. If it gets down to zero and the and you don't see a splash, then your bomb did not receive terminal guidance or it's a dud or something's wrong with the bomb or you did your attack wrong or whatever. But the bottom line is is that it didn't impact where you wanted. Okay, now we're going to go over, we're going to briefly go over the control area. A lot of this stuff is unimplemented. Um, the only thing that you really should know about is... Um, uh, over here on the left where it says N slash M, okay? If we turn that on, I'm going to go ahead and click Control to get out of that. Uh, two very important things are added to the targeting pod, which I always recommend having on, okay? The first thing that gets added at the top left here, this is the longitude and latitude of whatever you're looking at. So you can actually use the targeting pod as a forward air controller. You can find targets for other people, give them the longitude and latitude, and then they can plot that into their ICP and then attack whatever, whatever you're looking at yourself. Another thing that it adds is it just tells you where north is. It adds this as well. So N is north, and the arrow points in what direction north is. So north is currently to the 6 o'clock of the current view that I'm looking at. Okay. Now, a final and very important, although confusing, aspect of the targeting pod is the situation awareness indicator and that is this little white square okay and you'll see that it moves when I move my targeting pod okay this is telling me the attitude and pitch of my nose in relation to the ground stabilized target so it's really confusing I'm not even going to try to explain it you'll probably make your head explode it's something that you're probably going to need to just play around with or read the manual in order to understand it 
the bottom line is is that if this white square is above the target area it means that you're flying head on to the target so if you can imagine your nose lined up directly at the target you're flying right into it now when you um, when you fly over the target you're gonna see the white square it's gonna flip to the six o'clock position that's just telling you that you're flying away from it and that your nose is facing the opposite direction of the target and if you move off the gimbals you'll see it does a similar thing it'll, it'll slew around to the left or right and that's just telling you that, um, that's just showing you where your nose is. And again, it's, it's counterintuitive. It takes a long time to understand how it works. So just, you know, watch it as you're making attacks and you know, eventually you'll figure it out. Now, that's pretty much it for the uh, components of the targeting pod. The next thing we're going to go over is how to actually prosecute an attack. So I pretty much reset the jet. We're gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna put my uh, laser arm on. Then I'm gonna switch into master air to ground mode. I'm gonna select the targeting pod on the page. Switch into air to ground mode. And uh, just to preface this, the situation is that we have a bunch of targets at the Kotar range, which is steer point five, target five. Uh, right now we're referencing the IP. So the idea behind using the targeting pod usually is that you designate a target steer point in the briefing, then you'd reference it using your FCR, and then you'd snap the targeting pod to the FCR and be able to view whatever the target is that way. So right now I'm at the IP, and we can note that if I change steer points, it changes, the targeting pod is slave to it. So if I change steer points, it also changes on the targeting pod. So I'm going to go ahead and change it from IP4 to the target. And we can also note that on the FCR it also changes automatically. And this is covered in my CCRP and CCIP video. So switch to the target. See it snapped there. It also snapped here. Now we can see on the screen here um, the left side of the crosshair, that's the range apparently. You have to take my word for it and it looks like the steer point is actually off of the range to the right of it because as we can see the on your HUD it, it works exactly like CCRP because we are in CCRP on the FCR the targeting de the target designator box will show you exactly where the targeting pod is viewing so right now it's on top of the steer point if I move it off we can see the steer point diamond so for whatever reason the uh, steer point is off of the range. Now that's fine, and I'm going to show you how to make adjustments using the targeting pod. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to press DMS down to set, switch center of interest to the targeting pod. So press DMS down. Now, if it's not already slaved to the FCR, you can press TMS down. Okay, so press TMS down. It's already slaved to the FCR. Now, if I want to look around, I need to ground stabilize the targeting pod. So in order to do that, I press TMS up, and that will switch it from uh, uh, steer point mode to uh, area mode, IR area mode. Okay. So I press TMS up, and we'll see it becomes ground stabilized. I can now slew it around using my arrow keys. And uh, let's just go over in depth exactly what this means under the crosshair. So the first word, IR, is telling you what polarity mode you're in. So it's either, or what uh, visual mode you're in. It's going to say IR or it's going to say TV. It'll say IR for white hot or for um, black hot, and that just means infrared. The next is the uh, tracking mode that it's in. And there's technically three tracking modes. There's area mode which is pretty much used against buildings and it's used against uh, you know large targets or groupings and um, it's the least accurate mode but it's also the most common mode then there's point mode and the way you'd enter point mode is you'd slew over something and then you press TMS up and it's designed to work on targets that have well contrasting corners so tanks, aircraft that are on the ground, stuff like that anything that has a contrasting corner, very sharp corners, 
uh, you can switch into point mode. And the advantage of point mode is that it allows for real-time tracking of whatever you have in point mode. So if you slew over a tank, for instance, and you press TMS up, it'll switch into point mode. And then rather than you have to move around the targeting pod in order to stay on the target, it will actually snap to the target and then stay on it. Now, there's a problem, though, because in this version of BMS, point mode is very buggy, and it doesn't really work. It works maybe one out of a hundred times when it should. So, in almost all circumstances, you're going to be using area mode, and that's fine because it's just as accurate. It just doesn't move, tra uh, it doesn't track moving targets that well. Now, I said there was three modes. The third mode is called computed rates, okay? And computed rates is a mode that happens when... Um, the targeting pod is masked, okay, and masked, masking the targeting pod is a major concept. When the targeting pod is masked, it means that the laser coming out of the targeting pod is hitting into your aircraft, and it's usually caused from when you do too hard of a turn or you're diving, stuff like that will cause the targeting pod to become masked, and if it's masked, then the laser cannot provide guidance. The way, okay, so the way the aircraft works is, or the target part works is, if, if it knows that it's going to hit into your aircraft, it just turns the laser off. And the reason for that is, in real life, is that the laser is not eye safe, so you can basically blind the pilot or other friendly aircraft if the laser hits into the aircraft and then refracts in whatever way. So that's modeled in the game. And, um,. If it's in computed rates mode, then it's because the laser is being masked. And you'll know that the laser is being masked if the L has an M next to it. Okay, And also, area will change to rate. You never want to give terminal guidance in rate. Because the laser is very inaccurate or it's off. And the targeting pod is basically making calculations on whatever it previously was lazing. So, it's very inaccurate and I would highly recommend not providing terminal guidance to a bomb in rate. Okay. Now, as I said, the third part of this uh, sentence under the, the crosshair is just telling you that the laser is armed. It's L. If it's flashing, it means that it's emitting. And as I just said before, if there's an M next to it, it means that it's being masked. And another way you'll know if uh, the laser is being masked is that the crosshair will actually flash the crosshair will flash and it will also say mask on your HUD next to the meatball. So now that we've gone over the basic you know, mechanics of moving around and knowing what you're looking at, things like that, we're going to actually do an attack now. Um, so let's go ahead and switch to um, GB12. So right now I have uh, two GB24s, which are these... Uh, messed up. You have two GB-24s, which are these big, big-ass laser-guided bombs on my wings. And we also have uh, four GB-12s, which are 500-pound bombs. The GB-12s are 1,000 pounds. Uh, both of them are laser-guided. If it has GB in the title, then it's laser-guided, or if it has GBU. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use my GB-12s. And what you do is, is you just basically slew the uh, crosshair into what you want to hit and then you just fly into the fall line on your HUD as you would CCRP. So you could technically, you don't have to be hitting anything. If I wanted to I could move this targeting bot all the way close to me until I was right under me and then I could release the bomb right now. And um, yeah, so the basic point is, the, best, the basic idea is that um, you'd slew over what you want to hit and then just fly into it using CCRP. And as I said before, if you don't understand CCRP, just check out my CCRP video. I'm not going to go over that in this video. And another thing is, um, if you saw what happened before, you might have missed it. I actually got disoriented. I uh, slew down because I was trying to show you guys something and then I tried to find the targeting range and I got disoriented. This is a great example of what you can do if that happens. You can just press TMS down, okay, and then it will snap right back to the steer point, or whatever your FCR is referencing, okay, and then you can press TMS up, you can go right back into area mode and find what you want to attack, simple as that, 
So that being said, let's finally do an attack. Now, I'm too far away from the targets in order to see them, so we're going to have to fly closer. I'm going to unpause the game. We're about 16.5 um, miles out, as you can see right here. We're about three minutes to weapon release. If I were to attack whatever I'm referencing now. You can see it's nice and ground stabilized. And the target bot also can scan about 360 degrees, almost. Okay, now we're starting to see stuff. So I'm going to pause this. We can see here on the targeting pod, we can see these little white specks and also what looks like a radar from on the left side of the targeting range. So I'm just going to zoom in, put it on the narrow field of view. We now see that that's clearly a radar of some sort. Uh, but we're not going to be attacking that. We're going to be attacking something on the range. And we can see here, you know, if we're in a wide field of view you can barely see what's going on there you can barely make out anything but if you go into narrow we can see it a lot easier and remember that you can zoom in even further than that so let's go ahead and do that now we can almost make out what it is those look like F4s and these look like armored fighting vehicles of some sort we have some helicopters here some MIGs some targets some more MIGs. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and engage these F4s. And as we get closer, we'll be able to see them a lot easier. And we can see them pretty good, actually, in TV mode. If we switch to TV, like I said, TV is actually has better resolution, but it's just uh, it's not it's not a FLIR image, though. So if we were zoomed out, um, if we were zoomed out in TV mode, you know, we might not, and we were just slewing around, we might miss them because they're not going to pop out. You know what I mean? They're not going to be popping out white or black against a, a gray background. So, that being said, let me zoom in here. And let's go attack these F4s. So we're going to fly into the full line just like we would CCRP. about 13 and a half miles out. When, if for whatever reason, when you're flying, if the crosshairs leave, if they leave the target, just put them back on. It's that simple. You're using your arrow keys. Okay, now, before we, before we uh, release Let's just quickly go over what we're going to see here. So right now, you know, we're going to get to uh, the, the time of weapon release, okay? Then this right here, the weapon release time is going to change to whatever the time to impact is after the bomb gets released. And this L is going to flash when it's giving terminal guidance to the bomb, okay? So just go ahead and look for that when I'm doing my attack run. Slew around the targeting pod if I want to change targets. We're about nine miles out. We're about 30 seconds away from release. Okay, here comes the release queue. If I, wanted to, I could actually, if I wanted to, I could actually loft the bomb right now. Here comes the release.
Watch the time to impact on the bottom right. Right now it's 12 seconds. Once it gets below 10, it's going to go terminal. We're going to see that L flash. There it goes. And impact in two seconds right now. Boom. So that's how you do a run. I'm just going to do one more just to show you guys how it works. I mean, that's pretty much all there is to using the targeting pod. It's pretty much just CCRP with a little bit extra, which is, you know, you're pretty much just, um, Okay, we can see right now what's happening is I'm actually masking the targeting pod. And see it says mask. And there's an M next to the L. And the reason for that is is I'm just turned in such a fashion that the target's pretty much behind me. And probably just the tail of my aircraft is blocking the targeting pod. If I turn very slightly to the left to the right, it should unmask. Back into area mode. Let's go ahead and uh, can we attack next? Let's kill one of these APCs. We're about four and a half miles out. This is going to be a pretty close release. seconds to impact. Flying over the target now. Laser on at seven seconds. Impact is now. Boom. So that was the basics of how to use the targeting pod in air to ground. It's not very complicated. It does require a bit of introduction in the terminology and the targeting pod has a lot of information that can display on it so it's a little, little overwhelming. That being said, um, there's only one more feature that we're going to be going over and that is um, Cowboy. One, return the to base. air to ground targeting pod. So again, when we're in uh, master Three. air to air mode, we're just going to switch Four. and add the targeting pod. And now you'll see when we when we switch it from standby mode, there's going to be an AA option available. I'm going to switch to that. And now it's going to display something uh, if I lock it up on the FCR. And we can see uh, right now the targeting bot is still slaved on the ground. If we wanted to, we could just switch over there and press DMS down, or TMS down, and now it's... Now it's scanning what we have on the FCR. Should be some F-16s behind me, so I'm just gonna... Yep, there we go. There we go, we got some F-16s. Okay, so we can see here, I've locked up a contact on the FCR. And now it's slaved automatically to the air-to-air -air targeting pod. And this pretty much is exactly, exactly the same as the air-to-ground mode, except it just is able to uh, contact air units. Simple as that. And uh, it's pretty simple. The only real difference in this mode is that um, you can't zoom in any further than uh, the default zooms. I mean, you have narrow and you have wide, but that's pretty much it. You can't zoom in any further than that. That's pretty much uh, the concept here. If we get closer, I mean, obviously right now this guy's at about eight miles and we can barely see him on the targeting pod. So this is not very effective for identifying what you're looking at. But, I 
that's the basic concept. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know if there's anything else that I can go over. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to the targeting bot. We could go further in depth, like buddy lazing, and um, you know, I could fully explain the um, that little square that's floating around, but. We'll leave that for another time. So please leave any comments or suggestions in the uh, comments. Thanks.